The president charged him to dispense justice in accordance with the law. I know you've had a somewhat difficult few weeks in the run-up to today. Happily, you comported yourself in a dignified manner. And I can only urge you to overlook these events, which should be a mere blip on your public career, and dispense justice in accordance with your conscience and the rule of law. I wish to assure Your Excellency the President that I would, to the best of my ability, uphold the faith reposed in me to ensure that the 1992 Constitution is upheld and, for that matter, the rule of law. I would therefore do my best not to disappoint. Still at the Jubilee House, President Kufuado again swore into office Justice Amadou Tanko. Do in the name of the Almighty God swear. Do in the name of the Almighty God swear. That I will directly or indirectly. But I will not directly or indirectly. President Kufuado charged Justice Amadou Tanko to live above reproach. It is important for you to bear in mind that the growth of our nation demands that we have a judiciary that commands the respect of the people by the quality of its delivery of justice as well as by the comportment of its judges. Application of the laws of the land must occur in the words of the judicial oath you have just taken without fear or favor, affection or ill will. This is the beginning of the end of a journey which began under humble circumstances of birth and upbringing, but driven by a passionate dedication, discipline, and determination to break a barrier and change the narrative. Justice Amadou Tanko thus becomes the first Muslim to be appointed to the Supreme Court. Still at the presidency, the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia, has cut sword for the upgrading of roads in all seven garrison of the military across the country. More than one billion Ghana cities has been earmarked to give a facelift to roads. The reconstruction of the garrison roads is part of the Barracks Regenerative Project, which will cover all the seven garrisons across the country. The 250-kilometer road face lift will comprise repair works and the fixing of traffic lights. More than one billion cities has been earmarked for the reconstruction of the roads in the garrison. Vice President Dr. Mohamed Bahomia, who cut the sword for the project to begin, urged the contractors to give quality work. I therefore urge the contractors to ensure that high quality work is done for the roads to last. You know you are in a military barracks. If you don't do the high quality works, uh, you may have to do some push-ups and other things. And you may not be allowed to leave. So, so you, you better do high quality work. And I'm sure that the contractor, contractors have been selected on the basis of how uh, the quality of their work. Minister of Defense Dominic Nitiwo emphasized government's investment in the military since 2017. The government is investing another billion and more Ghana City into the roads investment. That is three and a half years. I have not talked about the vehicles, the investment in the armored vehicles. I have not talked about the investments in all the places we have done. Ensuring that all our Air Force planes are beginning to fly again. The Minister of Roads and Highways, Kwesia Mwakwata, spoke about plans to cooperate with the military to address our road network challenges. We are also working with the 48 engineers regiment and we know the expertise that they have, especially in bridge construction. And from today, my ministry is going to deepen this alliance. The Chief of Defence Staff, Lieutenant General Obedakwa, lauded the government for considering the military as part of the Year of Rose initiative. Indeed, we are on the threshold of a new phase of barracks mobility. We are now going from the main roads to arterial roads, thereby creating an efficient network of roads across all garrisons. Since 2017, government has spent over 600 million cities in salaries and emoluments for the Ghana Armed Forces.
Uh, the president's nominee for the position of a municipal chief executive for the Takwan Shoe Municipal Assembly has been confirmed, although some eligible assembly members were allegedly prevented from taking part in the exercise as Friday morning. The 22 aggrieved assembly members have threatened to go to court over the process which they say is illegal. The 22 assembly members were allegedly prevented from taking part in the confirmation exercise of Municipal Chief Executive MCE nominee Benjamin Kessy by heavily armed policemen. As, as early as 6.30, no much as our program, you have Now, no crumb point, you know, you assembly members, 22, or my crime, you know, me and me, you know, you have to police for. We were supposed to start at 8 a.m., but they started at 6 a.m. I was beaten mercilessly and prevented from taking part. The MCE nominee was, however, confirmed on Friday by 90% of assembly members present. He had 19 yes votes and two no votes. 21 out of the total of 43 members of the assembly participated in the confirmation exercise. Before his nomination, he was rejected three times by the assembly in his bid to become the presiding member of the assembly. Earlier, six groups in the Takwa Insuyem municipality had questioned the basis for the nomination of Benjamin Kessi when he had been rejected three times by the assembly. Benjamin Kessi replaces Gilbert Kennedy Asma, who was recently declared the best performing MMDCE in the Western region. And now, the Chamber for Local Governance says it has noted with grave concern the Rambo style in which the Municipal Chief Executive of the Takwan Siai Municipal Assembly, Benjamin Kese, was confirmed by a deliberately selected number of Assembly members. Chalog wishes to condemn in no uncertain terms the brutality meted out to the 23 honorable assembly members, including the presiding member, who were further prevented from the police from entering the assembly hall to participate in the voting for the confirmation of the MCE nominee. Charlock says it will, in the coming days, take the necessary actions to assist the brutalized assembly members whose fundamental human rights have been abused to seek legal redress to possibly pray the court to nullify the confirmation of the president's nominee for MCE for the Takwan Siaim Municipal Assembly. And our assembly members in Kwawa municipality in the greater Accra region are demanding immediate removal of the municipal chief executive Joshua Borte from office for running the affairs of the assembly unconstitutionally. Now, the members again called on the president, Nana Kufado, to investigate the MCE for corrupt practices. Here's a report by Frederick Clarence Williams. The assembly member claimed the MCE has rendered newly inaugurated assembly in 2018 created by the president, Nana Kufuado, functionless. The member described the MCE as incompetent, corrupt and rendered communities in the municipality not to benefit from the creation of the assembly. Technically, the assembly is not functioning. It's run the assembly from its own pocket. And this is totally breach of the constitution of the local government act and the, look, uh, the standing orders. Therefore, we are removing him from office as the municipal chief executive. No decision is being taken involving the assembly members. Therefore, we realize that it is of no use to the assembly and of no use to the municipality. The assembly member also alleged the MCE has awarded all contracts to himself and his in-law, who is also superintendent of revenue collection. Due proper procedures were not followed. In awarding most of the contract, he is now managed. No tendering process, no, none of the contract came to a general assembly meeting for approval. So he is, he is awarded a contract to himself in a dubious manner. But for that matter, none of revenues coming to the assembly for, pay, for payment of the IGS staff. We are not even having money to even do minor, minor development in the municipality. Therefore, the assembly is lacking. The assembly is sinking. 
The members also alleged funds released by the Common Fund Administrator to all MMDAs to fight COVID-19 pandemic is missing. We do not know the whereabouts of the fund. We do not say that the Assembly has been provided no smarts to even to share to our community, not even talk about sanitizers or gradual packet, nothing. We have done this thing from our own pocket of, as, as Assembly members and from other support of other uh, volunteers who have supported Assembly members to do this in, in our own way. But the Assembly has not supported us in any way in this fight. So therefore, and we believe that the government has played its part by providing funds for the Assembly. But the MCE and for other reasons has sat on the fund and we don't know what is using the fund for. They therefore demanded an immediate removal of the MCE from office before they start impeachment process. Now, we're getting information that there is a fire outbreak at a foam factory in Mampong. Uh, we will be crossing over uh, to uh, Ashanti Regional Correspondent to give us an update or, or some more information on what we're hearing. But that's the news just coming through that there's a fire outbreak at a foam factory in Mampong. We'll get details of that. Stay with me. Uh, welcome back. Let's cross over to uh, the Ashanti region, uh, specifically in Mampong, where we understand a foam factory has uh, just uh, gone up in flames. And my colleague, Ibrahim Abubakar, is at the fire scene. He joins us via Skype. You see the fire blazing right behind him. Ibrahim, tell us uh, what, what more have you uh, seen and, and observed where you are? Well, Alfred, I can tell you the firefighters are doing their best to douse the fire, but it keeps burning. And the fire started around 5, and as you can see, it's around 7.30. But the more they quench the fire, the more um, it, it goes up. Because this section is the production section. So um, where it's burning currently is where they store their chemicals. So, and this is a foam factory. You can imagine the chemicals. Are there burning and in the foam too? Are there burning? Um, I've seen a couple of fire tenders here, and the firefighters are also doing their possible best. Well, so Ibrahim, we're going to try and, and still get to him. I, you should understand this because there's a lot of activity there, and due to this fire outbreak, there's a lot of movement, and then also the uh, some must in the area have had uh, their connection also interrupted as a result of this fire outbreak there so uh, that's why the, the connection is is not really too clear but we, we try to get through to ibrahim again uh to give us an ad update on what's happening really there so that's what the situation is we're going to get into the world of business now and the nikki amens abrampa is already standing by uh when we get through to ibrahim again he will give us an update on this thank you what's happening Right, Alfred, it's time for business. And uh, let's get to the detail now. Some members of the Vehicle and Assets Dealers Association of Ghana, VADAG, are considering folding up due to the adverse impact of the COVID-19 on their businesses. The members who want to access government 600 million city stimulus package say they cannot pay the salary of their workers as well as paying their rent. Let's get the detail. Kill an Asset Dealers Association of Ghana, VADAC, has a membership of 3,800 nationwide. The members complain the impact of the COVID-19 has been dire on their businesses. Some say they may have to lay more than 20 workers due to the pandemic. They complained about their inability to pay their staff and rent, asking government to aid them as a 600 million city stimulus package. Chairman of the association, Bernard Intraqua, is confident the stimulus package will cushion them to defray some of the operational costs. COVID-19 has affected our business, especially the, to pay our workers and then to pay our you know, rent and other things. It has affected us a lot. So that is the more reason why we thought this, we, this is a welcome news for all of us. But the package... The package itself, I think, is, is in good order. Vice Chairman of VADAC, Brian Jani Selby, asked government to disperse the fund immediately. You're yes, saying things like that, but because unless we have, we need, we need something to help us, like we need this package to help, we need money to help us. Because without money, <laughs> it's, it's going to be tough. 
close yes, we, have, we might have to close down if if we don't get help. Public relations officer of the association, Oboka Henkai, said the stimulus package is a step in the right direction. Explain that to most of our, you know, our our uh, members to understand that this loan or the facility is not there for you to restart your business or give you the intensive to start something. No, just to what the COVID-19 has affected us. The association is collating the list of its members who need to assess the stimulus package. Well, Muslims across the globe will be observing a low-key Eid al-Fitr celebration. This is as a result of the ban on social and religious activities to help contain the spread of COVID-19. Our Ashanti Regional Correspondent Ibrahim Abubakar reports the situation has adversely impacted on business activities in the Zongo community. The festival usually comes with a fanfare as Muslim communities come together to celebrate and observe congregational prayers. Ordinarily, around this time, businesses within the Zongo community would be recording high sales. But the story is different this year. Boutique operators and tailors have been badly hit. A year ago, business was brisk, but the ban on public gatherings has affected this year's celebrations immensely. Every Ramadan, by this time, every shops within the Zongo communities will be crowded with people. But uh, this year's tend to be different from the previous years. Uh, previous years. So, in the nutshell. Uh, it has negatively affected businesses within the Zongo communities. Most tailors at this hub at the Kumasa Central Market were idle and did not have work to do. Despite the adverse impact of the pandemic on their businesses, they were grateful to God for life. Well, let's go back and talk about that uh, stimulus package from government. Well, the Ghana Chamber of Young Entrepreneurs have called on the National Board for Small Scale Industries, NBSSI, to, as a matter of agency, consider businesses owned and run by young people when disbursing or distributing that 600 million city stimulus package. According to the Chamber, this call is necessitated as a result of emanating from a survey conducted on the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on operations of its members. The survey which was conducted from April 13 to April 30 revealed that about 45% of small and medium enterprises SMEs owned and run by young entrepreneurs are likely to fold up which will subsequently result in about 60% of the persons employed by young entrepreneurs losing their jobs. Based on this survey, the Chamber called for an immediate intervention since young entrepreneurs constitute a greater percentage of SME population. We are also crying for this because of a survey we conducted last, uh, last month, April. It revealed shockingly that close to about 45% of SMEs owned and run by young people have totally closed now as we talk now and if you ask them they will tell you some of them can't even pay their rent can't pay salaries can't even pay for product or input ceo of the chamber sheriff gali urged the national board for small-scale industries nbssi to consider young entrepreneurs during evaluation and disbursement of the 600 million cd stimulus package there's no way that is mentioned that a kind of a focus will be given to young entrepreneurs. It's quite open. And you know that when you open this to the market, the big elephant will just swallow it. So that's why we are saying that at least there should have been some preferential treatment. Maybe say out of this 600 million, we are saying at least 100 million will go to young entrepreneurs or SME owners that are under 35 years old. He further stated most of these young business people are considered high risk and as a result rarely get access to bank loans or investment support. Yes, I believe that I know MBSA is going to do a good work, but we want a focus, a priority to be on young entrepreneurs. President Ekofo Ado on April 5 announced a soft loan scheme of up to 600 million cities for the SMEs which would sustain the country's affected industries and address the disruption in economic activities caused by COVID-19.
All right, so moving away from issues on the stimulus package, talking petroleum and energy, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, COPEC, is raising red flags over the quality of liquefied petroleum gas being supplied by the Atuabo Gas Company. In an interview with TV3, Executive Secretary of COPEC, Duncan Amwa, warns the propane content in the product is dangerous as it is highly flammable beyond allowed levels. COPEC insists the recent product from the company has been contaminated, a situation they fear could cause explosion if not checked. Executive Secretary of COPEC is therefore calling on the Ministry of Energy to intervene immediately to avert any unforeseen consequences. Quality of LPG that Atuabo is putting on the market currently leaves a lot to be desired. A situation where you have so much propane uh, that has a higher boiling, I mean, temperature and pressure. Uh, you do get the understanding that the quality is questionable and uh, that is why you have some of the gases on the market that is quite smelly. Duncan Amwa also wants the pricing regime reviewed as the gas supplied by the Atuabo Gas Company is more expensive compared to gas supplied from the international market. Atuabo's prices are usually higher than imported gas by the BDCs, sometimes 40 pesos. We do think that if the authorities would take a second look at Atuabo's efficiency, it would help Ghanaians gravitate towards LPG use more than what they are currently doing. All right, so that would do for business tonight. You can log on to 3news.com. And just before I wrap up, I want you to know that the city keeps seesawing there on the interbank markets. It appreciated against the euro to the pound. When you log on to 3news.com, you will get more news updates there. My name is Nana Ikria Mensa Brampa. We'll continue with more later. Let's cross over back to Ibrahim Abubakar at uh, that fire scene. Ibrahim, tell us uh, what, what is going on there right now. So, Ahmed, like I said, it's been more than two hours, but the firefighters are still trying to douse the flame. The challenge here is that because there is no fire hide, water hide, it runs around. Just to get water to come here and um, try to douse the fire. So, as I speak to you now, I've been able to spot about um, seven fire tenders coming here. But, like I said, this is a foam factory, and the section that is burning, um, is the chemical section and where some of the mattresses are kept. So it has not been easy at all for the firefighters. I, I even saw two of them who had to lie down for um, water to be poured on them due to the intensity of the heat. So uh, it's not easy. They are also trying to, for now, what they tell me is that they've been able to contain the fire from spreading to the other facilities. And also they are having hectic time just to control the crowd here. A number of the people are here. They are not here to fight the fire. They are just here to witness it. So that is the challenge here. But we'll be here and update you in our subsequent bulletin um, as we ask them when we get any other information. After. Ibrahim, thank you so much for this update. So that's what's happening right there. You see the fire just there and the intensity of it is really clear right there. Uh, Ibrahim Abubakar is Ashanti Regional Correspondent. He's at Mampo now where that uh, foam factory, we understand, is up in flames. You see right there. We'll be updating you in our subsequent bulletins here on TV3. Let's get into the world of sports now. Hello, good evening and welcome to the sports segment here on News 360 with me, Juliet Bewa. Now, seasoned sports journalist and president of the Sports Writers Association, Kwabana Yabua, believes the Ghana Premier League should only be allowed to return when there is compelling professional reason and time to do so. Speaking to TV3 on the ongoing matter, he reiterated that in the face of increasing infections, it is important to listen to bodies who have the necessary know-how to advise on the way forward. If the time is not right and we do not have the green light from the central government, I think that uh, it would be wishful thinking for us to start thinking we're going to play football because whether we like it or not, there is a spike in the infection rate, uh, although the consolation is that the number of deaths uh, is relatively low. One death is even uh, one too many. 
so I doubt whether indeed if from a purely footballing perspective we want to go and play football and infections keep uh, uh, rising as to whether or not at the stadium we can observe all the protocols that for example we put in place for us is another question altogether how are you going to manage that and if you start playing football and infection rates start going up what are you going to do so i think at this particular stage we need to uh burn our time and await a green light from the central government based on what they call the science and data from the Ghana Medical Association. That's it for sports here on News 360. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more here. Please stay with us. Time for some entertainment news. I'm Anita Ikea Akufu. And in entertainment tonight, singer and songwriter Lady J believes her genre of music is yet to be understood by Ghanaians. This, she believes, has hindered her ability to progress in the music industry. She spoke to TV3 Entertainment. Lightness and darkness, I find my light I shine. Singer and songwriter Lady J has been on the Ghanaian and Nigerian music scene for almost a decade. She has worked with influential artists such as Sarkodie, B.O.J., Efia, Yapono, just to name a few. Lady J bemoaned poor structures in the Ghanaian music industry. First of all, in Ghana, we don't even have a structure. They are motivated by three things. Money, luxury, and sexual, like, things. There's some artists out there that when they do that for them, it works for them. That's one. Two, wealth. Ah, if you see on Instagram, this person has a car or a Benzo or this or a Beamer. People are attracted, but the reason why maybe I'm not like that is because I'm not like that. The songstress further revealed musicians have lost their passion for making music and are rather influenced by money. Lady J believes she's not progressed in the music industry due to her refusal to expose her body. That's why I think maybe I'm not dead down because I'm not willing to do certain things like shaking your ass or go nude or, or beef or fights. Like, I'm not willing to do any of these things because we oh, are yeah, necessary. I see the freedom, I see the love. And now Ghanaian local language channel Onia TV on Saturday will premiere an exciting show called Girls Kasa. The show focuses on women and their opinions. TV is Ghana's fastest growing Ghanaian local language channel, providing news, current affairs, entertainment and lifestyle programming. Premiering on Saturday, May 23rd is an all-new show, Girls Kasa, which will air every Saturday from 5.30pm to 6.30pm. The one-hour fun, thought-provoking talk show with no-holds-barred interviews will be hosted by three exciting women. The dynamic hosts are movie actress and television host Benedicta Gaffa. Radio and television presenter Ohima Echampoma and Yabasafo, an experienced and content producer. Girls Casa is a show you cannot afford to miss this on every Saturday from 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. only on Onia TV. And yes, indeed, Girls Casa is something you have to look forward to tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. on Onia TV. But that's it for entertainment. My I want to say thank you. This morning is on 3news.com. Thank you for staying with us here over the last 60 minutes here on News 360. I am Alfred Okansi. My name is Aisha Yakubo. Enjoy your weekend.